everyone and welcome to my new dory paint video you know i told you already before that i can get ideas for my new dolls just everywhere sometimes just somewhere in the middle of the supermarket and this is exactly what's happened this time because i came to one of our local stores to buy some washing products and i ended up with this beauty and the beast doll the bell doll from beauty and the beast First of all, it was on sale, so I just had to buy her. And another thing why this doll attracted me so much is because it's not just some Beauty and the Beast doll. I've repainted one of them already before I may put a picture of her here somewhere on top. But this one is actually Emma Watson doll, the Beauty, the Belle from the Beauty and the Beast film. And here on the back of this package we have even the reference picture. So, of course, I just had to buy this doll, yeah, good price, mold of Emma Watson, her face. So, I'm really, really, really curious to start working on this doll. You know, I'm not really practicing portrait dolls making, because it's a very special genre, and uh, for this you need to have not just draw eyes that look the same, you need to have all the lines going on under the same angles in the same way, you know, the cheeks, everything, is just the mold should be at least a little bit similar. That's why this doll, I think, is very promising. I know that already some the doll artists have done it, probably, so now, yeah, now it's my turn to try to turn this doll into a one that really looks like a real Emma Watson from the back of this box. Because right now, no, yeah, there is something from Emma Watson in this doll, but no, it's not really a portrait doll. So, wish me luck because I'm not really a professional in it, but I will try to do my best and it all looks... And it all looks promising, and her dress is very pretty, and her hair looks good, so I think it's gonna be an interesting makeup. So, let's start! So, let's open the box, and here is the doll. The rose in her hand is, of course, just ridiculous. Look at it, what is this carton? But at least her arms are bendable, the legs are not, unfortunately, but her dress is really pretty. Look, with four skirts, no cheap fabric like the previous one I had. Then I remove her old face with pure acetone. Now I need to take her head off to be able to blush the body and with this doll it goes much easier than with Monster High dolls and with Barbie because the peg in her neck is smaller and I don't really need to use a hair dryer nor hot water but of course it requires some effort anyway. With a light brown pencil I sketch her eyes and eyebrows. It's really good to have this reference picture from the box, I will use it really a lot today. So now I'm checking the position of the inner corners of her eyes, they should be on the same line like the sides of her nose. Then the corners of her lips are on the same line with pupils. And I also check the position of the outer corners of her eyes.
Now let's look at the position of her eyebrows. I am making a line going through the corner of her lips, the side of her nose and the third point on this line will be the beginning of her eyebrow. The end of the eyebrow lays on the line that connects the corner of the lips with the outer corner of her eye and the highest point of the eyebrow is on the line that goes from the corner of the lips to the pupil. Then I'm drawing the shape of her nostrils and the lips. Now I'm going to select pastels that match the colors on the picture. I take this burnt amber as a basic shadow color, then the dark English red I will use for some darker shadows, the dark brown will be used for the deepest shadows in the darkest places, and here on her eyelids I see some warm brown color and for this warmth I will use this red caput mortum and I also need some light pink for the blush and of course a set of brushes I need and as a palette for pastels I will use like always a piece of sanding paper now let's take a look at the shadows on her face we see dark hairline very dark sides of the forehead, the sides of her cheeks are also very defined. Of course, the area around her nose and the eye creases are also the darkest. The corners of her mouth, the area under her nose. And now let's try to recreate the same type of shadowing on the doll's face. This is such a strange process in some way, you cannot really see the color that I'm applying, but at the same time you see that the doll starts to look more and more alive all the time.
let's look more detailed at her eyes. We see that the eyes are in shade and the white of her eyes looks completely grey. But the lower lash line is very highlighted except the outer corner where comes a shadow a little bit. And the shadow becomes immediately very dark at the side of the nose bridge. So I will take my pencils and I will start drawing similar shadowed and highlighted areas of her face. Her lips have become the most difficult part for me. I don't even know why, it feels like the mouth of the face mold is a little bit off, like the corners are too much up or something, so I was trying to catch the shape multiple times, trying to pull the corners of the lips a little bit down, or it's maybe just me and my hands, I don't know. Now let's take a look at the most highlighted spots on her face. 
Here is a light area on her forehead we see, as well as on the bridge of her nose, on her chin, and also under the eyes where the cheek starts. So let's do the same. With the very sharp black pencils, I draw the eyelashes. And of course, I will not add false lashes today because I will ruin this realistic look. Because on the picture, you almost cannot see the lashes at all. Now I think her face is done and I can blush her body as well. Now I'm going to put the head and the body back together and goes very easy again because of the smaller pack. Then I remove the protection from her hair and I peel off the rest of the sealant. You see there is no problem in it, the sealant goes easily off. And then I put her outfit back on. I really love her dress because this fabric looks good, not cheap, and it looks exactly like the original dress on the picture to me. I don't really think I can make anything better than this dress myself, so I will keep it like it was. I just want to replace this ridiculous paper rose with a pretty looking one, because this carton rose just ruins the realistic look of the doll. And here is my Emma Watson doll. I think it's for sure the most realistic doll that I've ever made. When I was just halfway done, she was already looking at me like a real living person. So I really want to work some more on these kind of dolls that, you know, have a mold of a real person. Not turning Barbie into Johnny Depp, but turning a Johnny Depp doll into the one that looks a little bit more like Johnny Depp, but more like a real human. And here I need your help a little bit because you know more about dolls on the market than me. And like, what other dolls should I try to repaint them like this? I know that Mattel makes kind of portrait dolls, but which ones are the most interesting and also available to buy, available on the market? And now please, tell what do you think about my work today? And also please put your likes to support my channel and my art, and of course subscribe and hit the bell button if you are new here. Because I post new Dory paints every week Friday. So guys, it was my video of the week. I will see you very soon in my next video. Have a nice weekend. Bye.